Hey guys, Kevin here from lp24audio.com. How you doing? Guess what? I got a tutorial for you on additive synthesis inside of Serum. Now, additive synthesis is the act of combining sine waves at different frequencies and amplitudes and coming up with a result. There's a dude named Jean-Baptiste Foyer, clearly a Frenchman who had this idea that every sound could be broken down into sine waves at different frequencies and amplitudes throughout time. So any sound, imagine that. We could synthesize any sound theoretically with additive synthesis. Now of course it's easier said than done. Obviously if you gave me a very complicated sound like a speaking voice or a singing voice we could only really represent it well if we had a really advanced additive synth. And it is possible, or through something called resynthesis, which is not something Serum can do, but plugins like Harmer can do it. There's also standalone applications like Spear, S-P-E-A-R, and uh, it's a Windows app that will do things like resynthesis. Even Iris by Isotope, they're getting onto the resynthesis bandwagon, because it's very powerful. But, Enough about resynthesis, let's talk about additive synthesis and fundamentally, like I say, it's a way to create sounds using um, multiple sine waves. So let's realize that the wavetable lookup oscillator we're looking at right now is stored moments of data throughout time on the disk, but it adds up when we play through this, there's a uh, Fourier analysis going on and Fourier, the Frenchman who, who made up the Fourier theorem, uh, he essentially said, okay, every sound can be broken down in the sine waves. And when a wavetable is scanning through saying, okay, what is happening in the frequency spectrum? Then we get a visual readout of it here in Serum. Now, you can zoom in to the additive synth uh, harmonics and fundamental frequencies here and you can see that every bin here represents one sine wave inside of the saw wave. So imagine the saw waves being broken down into multiple sine waves at different frequencies and amplitudes and phases throughout time. Okay, so the concept, hopefully you get that. Now let's talk about it in practice here because it's pretty fun technique to play with. In fact, if you just change this by dragging and drawing a square wave, I'm going to zoom in to, uh, sorry, zoom out to two times, and then update the additive display of this wavetable lookup by clicking this. So after clicking this, you can see that it takes the wave and transfers it to FFT, which is Fast Fourier Transform. Just a fancy pants way of saying we've made this into an additive display. Square wave has every other harmonic present, which we can talk about further in the harmonic analysis video, but for now I want to show you more practical tools and how we can use this to our advantage to create interesting sounds, probably why you came to this video. So first of all, let me grab my keyboard, play this good old square wave here. Okay, it has a kind of hollow sound due to the lack of uh, odd, or sorry, even numbered harmonics, we only have the odd ones present. Now, let's create a new wavetable position, because we're on position number one, and that's the only position that there was. Now there's a second duplicate of that, and we can play with our sound a little further. So I'm going to introduce some harmonics by zooming in here to um, eight times, we get the full uh, capacity of Serum's view. Now, see if we add some sine waves in and change the phase relationship of them, you're going to get various different shapes. And playing with the amplitude, you're going to get lots of fun little shapes. Now, obviously the patterns are endless here, but let's kind of settle on a couple. I'm going to keep pin plus, and this is a great way to experiment with synthesis, in my opinion, is understanding when you add harmonics or change certain harmonics, what happens sonically? And we're going to explore that in a second. So for example, what if we started introducing 
every waveform quite loud, or every harmonic quite loudly until that one. And you get you start to get these more what look to be FM style wavetables. Okay, maybe change these up a bit. There we go. Okay, I'm arbitrarily trying some stuff just to show you some variety. And then maybe we'll take it to a further extreme by adding some of these upper harmonics that seem to be relatively even or slowly, slowly, slowly decaying in volume. We're going to introduce some of those into here. Okay, now, by the time you get to this high bin, stuff starts looking a little bit like noise, which is actually because these are extremely high pitch frequencies. In fact, we can't even hear these. Not unless we turned everything off, then you can maybe hear some of these uh, frequencies, okay? So let's see, I'm going to turn some of these down, some up. You know, you can always right click too, but I, I right clicking you get all kinds of options like randomizing and stuff, but the idea here is to get a cool sound, I like an evolution where we have a square with some different harmonics, it gets progressively weirder, and then it gets a little insane. And let's do one final one, so we'll have six, oh, sorry, five bins in total. Okay, this one, just for kicks, we'll do the randomize. Uh, let's see, let's do create random gaps. That's kind of fun. And then we'll do a randomize low 16. There we go. So let's see what happens. Now, currently we only have five positions, but we're going to morph them together in some way. Let's start by morphing them with just a simple audio crossfade. Okay, and now let's have a listen. Technically, right, we've created an additive style wavetable, which is great that we can do that with technology nowadays. Um, back in the day with additive synths, we couldn't do such a thing. So let's have a listen, like I promised. So depending on what style of song you're going for, or genre, well, you might be scanning through different moments, say, okay, these are these noisier ones, they seem to reflect more of a talking sound, you know, kind of vocal synth or a, a growl type sound, and then these ones seem to be a little more traditional and tamed, uh, only in the respect that they're recognizable, right? But um, there's a lot of variety in one synth that you can get through additive synthesis by just kind of creatively. Um, I, I, I would say it's good to be creative and just try out different uh, additive style you know, arrangements in these bins and see what happens. And then you start to pick up on patterns, certain activities that uh, you do cause sounds to have certain qualities about them. And uh, we can go into more of those later, but I just want to introduce that idea to you and help you find ways to make your own wavetables. Now the last thing to know is you can save your custom wavetable by clicking there and calling it something, putting it in the default folder. Um, if we had this view here, you could see the whole thing. Okay, that's the tables folder in Serum Presets. Or we could just throw it on the desktop for now, potentially. I'll do that from... Uh, here. Okay, so I'll call it square crossfade. Okay, so once you do that, this will be available to you. If you did in your user folder, it'd be there, or you can drag and drop it from your desktop. So hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for watching, and uh, this is Kevin from LP24Audio.com. Hope to see you soon.